All right, so I thought I'd make a, a quick video about the 3,000 mile saga and how it continues. Um, it's been so long now, I gotta trim the bushes again and uh, do some work around the house. That's gonna take me about another day at least. Uh, and then we'll, of course, start packing. But uh, I just thought you'd get a kick out of this. It looks like we're gonna make a tire pressure video. <laughs> and it was not by design, I can tell you that. So here's, here's what happened, okay? The tire pressure sensor went off on the car. And I checked all the tires and they were all low, way low. One of them was way low. And so I had them check the tire for nails. Uh, the guy that I got, he wasn't a Toyota certified mechanic. I guess they just threw the, the, the dumbest guy at the dealer onto the car and uh, he told me that there was no nail in the tire and just to watch the pressure, no shit, Sherlock. You know, I gotta travel 3,000 miles. I wanna make sure that tire's okay. So then, come to find out, the son of a gun let the tire pressure out of the tires because he said they were overinflated. And I said, no, they weren't. I said, I checked that tire pressure myself. And the guy, you know, so he starts arguing with me. He says, well, you know, the tires, those tires were at uh, 30, 38 pounds. I said, well, yeah. I said, I just drove on an extremely hot day. You know, the tire pressure, what happens when those tires heat up is the air in them expands. And, uh, so you'll, you know, so I pumped it up to 36 pounds, which is what it requires on the front tires and 35 pounds on the back. We've talked about this for the Prius Prime. And uh, so of course it, it would uh, probably add a pound or two of pressure to those. So now he's underinflated the tires. Okay, so then, so then I get into an argument with another guy at the dealership and uh, he's telling me my tire pressure sensor, my tire pressure gauge is probably wrong. He says they can be up to five pounds incorrect so i started doing a whole bunch of research because it's so important to have these tires correct for the for the journey and uh so i did some research and he could be correct um those tire pressure gauges can be off uh a bit but usually not by five pounds usually it might be a pound or two so it occurred to me i said you know what i got to do i got to call up my garage and uh, i i guess i'll go ahead and give them a promotion because they said they're going to make a video tomorrow and we'll see what happens but I'm going to um, Clifford's garage and they've got a uh, like a hundred and fifty dollar tire gauge that they bought that they use for all the cars at the garage uh, these guys are squared away they they've done a great job for people they got a great reputation in the area and so we're gonna come in there and we're gonna make a tire pressure video and I've got uh, four four or five tire pressure gauges so we're gonna bring them in and we're gonna see how inaccurate my tire pressure gauges are. And we're gonna see what the dealer did to my tires when they deflated them. And, uh, and of course, we're gonna talk about how important tire pressure is when you're making a long journey like I am. And you might say, well, gosh, Kirk, aren't you being a little uh, anal <laughs> about all this? And, but no, I think now, because the dealer took pressure out of the tires, I'm about 99% certain they're all underinflated. Now, are you going to drive 3,000 miles on an underinflated tire because your dealer was a complete freaking idiot? You know, this is the crap you run into in life. You know, so that's, so this set me back another damn day. And I would have gone today, but they, you know, of course they're busy. And, you know, but, but, but I'm, you know, I, I told him I'd slip them a 20 or something, you know, just so we can make the video and, and, and talk about tire pressure and, uh, and check all my gauges against their gauges and just, just see what's what. Because... I don't want to be on the trip, you know, it, it could be my tire gauge, you know what I mean? I mean, it, it could be that the tire gauge was off, I, you know, I've got some other tire gauges and, you know, I'm, I, do I want to waste my time sitting out there comparing all my gauges to see which one is correct and then I'm, the, how are you going to know unless you go to a place that has a really expensive top quality tire gauge and compare your cheap you know, AutoZone <laughs> tire gauges. And, and then what the dealer told me, he said those little, those little push-out gauges are the most accurate. You know, the cheap ones that just have the stick that pushes out. I don't believe that for a second. I mean, I, I'm not saying they're inaccurate, but I'm just saying that, you know, the new gauges, which what I have, which is with the dial, some of them have the dial, some of them are digital. You know, I, I, I guess we'll find out. And that's the whole point of this video. You know, this is... This is what you got to do to prepare for a 3,000 mile journey. Now, you know, and then of course the, the other stuff, you know, you got to get the everyday stuff. So I got home from my hike yesterday 
and uh, of course everything was trashed. The car is trashed. My, I, you know, so I had to, you know, did a load of laundry, and uh, you know, my my wife came home from golf, and you know, I said I got to put away the laundry. Just give me a few minutes, you know, and that that started an argument, you know, because she wanted the the bedroom to to lay down, you know, and I'm just like, just give me a minute to at least put my damn laundry away. You know, this is this is the crap, you know, you, that you got to go through to do a 3,000 mile trip. So. All right, so that's the latest in the saga. I just wanted to make a cry on your shoulder for a minute and make a little quick video, I'll throw this up, and then, you know, after tomorrow's video, I'll just take this down, you know, at some point, because uh, we'll have the answer tomorrow as to whether, number one, did the dealer underinflate the tires, which I think they did. Uh, do I have a leak in the right front tire? I don't know. I don't know why it was so low. Why was it at 28 pounds? That usually indicates a nail to me. Uh, so, you know, and here I am getting ready to go on. And the guy's like, well, you could just take it back anytime if there's a leak in the tire. I'm like, no, man, I ain't even going to be around, you stupid son of a gun. I'm heading up 3,000 miles away. I mean, I don't even know where, but yeah, shit, I could be up in the National Forest, you know, two hours from a dealership before I could get the car taken care of. You know, these people are just ignorant, man. Oh, my God, don't get me started. Holy moly. All right, that's it for this video. I just, uh, I'm just, I'm just pissed off, and uh, anyway, that's, uh, that's it, that's the latest in the journey. You guys peace out and stay free. Oh yeah, you know, I always add on to these videos, I'm sorry. Uh, we discussed some other things at the dealership. Uh, one, I asked him if they wanted those cloth mats back, uh, and he said, no man, those things are valuable, you can, you can sell those and get some money for them. I, I said, well, I, you know, maybe so. I, so I didn't didn't give them the cloth mats. Uh, the other thing that that I'm questioning, and uh, I guess I'll have to watch a live stream of the car care nut. He's a certified Toyota Prius uh, mechanic, and uh, you can you can throw five dollars in the kitty, and he'll he'll answer your question. But the question that I've got is that do you charge that battery all the way up to 100%? And you know you never charge a lithium battery up to 100% unless you're going to drive it that day. So what the dealership is telling me now is that they've already built in to the, uh, the charging that those batteries only charge up to about 80, well, not, he said 90%. Okay, so they charge up to 90% and that's, uh, that's to protect the batteries, which would make sense. That would make sense because, you know, why would Toyota let the happy homeowner charge it all the way up? But it says on the dash 100%. So you see the conflict here, you know, so they're saying that you, even though it says 100%, you're really only putting a 90% charge on the batteries. I don't know. I don't know. And I don't even know who to ask to get the answer for that, uh, other than trust the dealer that, uh, that I can just plug it in and let it charge up completely and not worry about it, you know. Uh, am I going to do that? Probably not most of the time. I think what I'll do is just go in there and, and when it hits uh, on 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 my reading on, on the car reading, when it hits about 80%, uh, just unplug it there. Um, the other thing was, uh, you know, in the manual it says don't use a power power strip or uh, you know extension cord. You know, the, the, all the things that you know you're supposed to have a direct connection to the the breaker in the box, and we've talked about that in previous videos. Um, but uh, I tell you what, they proved they proved themselves because. Uh, what happened yesterday was I drove the car and the battery had no charge on it. And I had charged it up the night before, or I thought I had. And, uh, and I'm like, what the hell? I mean, you know, now it's something else broke on the damn car. Uh, nope. What it was is the, uh, the, the, the charger, I guess, that uh, when it's charging the car, it pulled too much. Uh, and it flipped, the, um, flipped that um, power strip right off. You know that's what the, that's the purpose of a surge protector is you know when it, when you have too much uh, power flowing through it it'll flip off to protect the the wiring. So yes, now I have to plug it directly into the outlet, uh, and that works fine. It did charge up, but I'm just so I'm just I'm, all I'm saying is that the manual is correct. You can't use a power strip uh, to plug the um, the charger uh, the charger wire into to hook it up to the Prius Prime. Um, so, you know, the saga continues, you know, I, and I wouldn't, I didn't want to use the power strip and I was certainly going to take care of the wiring in my garage, uh, when I get back from the trip. Um, 
But for now, you know, if you just plug it into an outlet that's connected to, uh, you know, a 15 amp breaker in the box, uh, you should be fine. And uh, and actually, I think this outlet, well, no, it's it's not it's not by itself. It's uh, there's other things in the garage that are connected to it, so it's not a direct uh, connection to a breaker in the box. And uh, will I eventually do that? Yes, I will. So anyway, that's uh, that's just a, another thing for the, the Prius Prime owner to understand is you know you are going to have to plug it directly into the outlet. Um, so hopefully you, you know you have an outlet there. Uh, I don't know about you, but my garage only has two. Well, well, I actually think it had my, yeah two outlets, and they were one 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 bangers. You know, one 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 outlet. <laughs> so you can plug two things in your garage. Who in the hell on the earth? only plugs in two things in their garage you know so you so you got to use power strips and and those uh you know those things that you push in to, to give you six six outlets and stuff you know so it's it's just insane all right that's it okay peace out for a second time and be free